I'm Dr. Adam McClendon with Liberty University School of Divinity, and I'm excited to be able to talk and kind of recap different Bible passages as I have the privilege of just devotionally investing in Scripture. If you haven't started following along already and you would like to do so, please check in the description below and you can find the Bible reading plan there. With that being said, this week we're in Mark chapter 2 and following, and as I'm reading about Jesus healing the paralytic person and all the different things, it brought me back to the very end of last week with Mark chapter one. And so just to kind of be retrospective, I wanna look at Mark chapter one, verse one. As I'm thinking through Mark chapter two and following, what is it that God really designs me to look for? Verse one of chapter one says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. I mean, that framework, as I'm reading through the healing of the paralytic man, I'm reminded that Jesus in being the Messiah, the Son of God, is giving us glimpses of what life in the kingdom looks like. Mark has this rapid pace. He's constantly, immediately, immediately, immediately. But when he chooses to tell a story, he really slows down and unpacks it. And that's interesting to me as I'm reading through this. And I'm getting glimpses of what the Messiah does, how he brings healings and and glimpses of kingdom life and what it will be like to live under his reign at the end of the age. And it's in that perspective that I'm going, okay, the whole book is about Jesus being the Christ, the son of the living God. So I thought, well, where where is he acknowledged as this Christ? And what, what I found as I went through and I began to read this week was no one's really catching this. Matter of fact, the word's not even used. He, he's not used any real terms of affirmation of his title of who he is or anything like that. Matter of fact, some things I noticed was the religious leaders are missing him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, Jesus' disciples are missing him. John's disciples are misunderstanding him. The multitudes are misunderstanding him. All these groups are misunderstanding him, so much so that, matter of fact, the first time he's actually given a real title attributed to his divinity and his lordship comes from a Syrophoenician woman, a Gentile woman in Mark chapter seven. Matter of fact, the the word the Christ isn't even used again in the book until Mark chapter eight, where Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And even then, Peter misunderstands the implications of that. And before then, like I said, the Syrophoenician woman, but also the only other group that acknowledges Jesus as as I'm going through here, are the demons. That's astonishing to me. And so as I reflected personally, it led me to three questions that I've really been thinking about. And I wrote them down here. Do I let cultural influences and traditions keep me from seeing and hearing from Jesus? And even when I see and hear from Jesus, am I so busy filtering that through my cultural lens that I'm not letting him speak from his cultural stage? The other question I ask myself is, is Jesus' testimony about himself enough for me? Jesus would say, this is who I am, and yet over and over again, they misunderstand it in these readings. And so I was so convicted. If they missed it, how easy is it for me to miss it? And the last question I asked here is, do I accept him at the basic level of who he is? Or do I put qualifications and qualifiers on that? Or do I simply say, no, 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 he is the Christ, the Messiah. He is the Son of God in the full weight of all that that entails. I need to submit to and fall down to. So what does Mark say? This is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not as a last name, but as a title, the Son of God. So wherever I am, I don't remember the author's goal of this text and that I need to submit more fully to who Jesus is. So I, again, I, I don't know what all you draw, drew out of the last couple of days of reading, but for me, that's been incredibly insightful and meaningful to my life, and I hope it is to yours as well.